What's up, squad? It's your boy, C-Dub, and I'm back. Yeah, back again with another one. Another one of these lit C-Dub ENT sports reaction videos, man. Yo, I know I've been MIA again, but that's only because I'm, I'm just finally starting to get over a serious cold that I had. You know, uh, for those of you that's on the main channel, you guys know. Uh, oh, man. Anyways, man. Old dog, you know what I'm saying? Sent us this video. And it's called Why Both of the NFL Conference Championships Were Rigged. Man, look. I, I believe it myself. I really believe that those games was rigged, man. I mean, for one, the Rams were supposed to lose because of that passing and fans call. And we all know that the Patriots, I ain't even got to go into that, right? Right. Anyways, man, yo, y'all ready to jump off into this video? Let's do it. What's up guys? Well, that was fun and awful. The two conference championship games did not lack drama or excitement. Both went down to the wire. Both ended in overtime. But oh, both also ended in terrible officiating and controversy. To the point where we can't help but wonder if there was some rigging involved. The Los Angeles Rams and New England Patriots are set to meet in Super Bowl 53. Meanwhile, the Kansas City Chiefs and New Orleans Saints are left wondering why their promising seasons ended with such awful calls. They both looked poised to play in the Super Bowl. So we did a little investigating and dug up some info and came to the theory that maybe the NFL was planning a Rams-Patriots Super Bowl all along. Now, it's easy to roll your eyes and dismiss it, but it's hard to ignore all the evidence. I'm Jason Biondo, and today we present why both of the NFL Conference Championships were rigged. Make sure to subscribe to TPS and put on your notifications because we post videos every single day. Every single day is a new video, so you should definitely subscribe. Go do it. The NFL has gone great lengths over the years to try and avoid controversy. Instant replay, coach challenges, reviewing every turnover and scoring drive, and so on. But here we are in the year 2019. Both conference championship games were essentially determined by awful officiating. The Los Angeles Rams defeated the New Orleans Saints thanks in part to a missed defensive pass interference call on Nickel Robbie Coleman. Aided by a Drew Brees interception, the Rams took advantage of the short field and clinched the NFC Championship after Greg Zerline booted the game-winning 57-yarder. As for the New England Patriots, they were once again the beneficiary of more controversial calls. Three reviews went the Pats' way in the fourth quarter of their AFC title game against the Kansas City Chiefs. One of the Patriots' touchdown drives in the fourth quarter was kept alive on a pathetic and embarrassing roughing the passer call. Chris Jones was flagged for barely hitting Tom Brady on the chest here. The Patriots would beat the Chiefs in overtime after Rex Burkhead scored the game-winning touchdown. Third straight Super Bowl appearance for New England. No surprise there. And so the Rams and Patriots were gifted trips to the Super Bowl. The Saints and Chiefs were obviously robbed of what should have been well-deserved trips to the big game. No matter what happens in Super Bowl 53, football fans and writers will not forget the embarrassing officiating in the two conference championship games. I mean, it was so horrible that you can't help but think these two games were rigged. So let's Let's start on the no call on Robbie Coleman that everybody's talking about. Drew Brees threw an incomplete pass to Tommy Lee Lewis that stopped the clock with 1.45 left. If Robbie Coleman gets flagged, the Saints get a fresh set of downs. With the Rams possessing just one more timeout, the Saints would have been able to run out most of the clock and let Will Lutz come on for an easy game-winning field goal. I mean, even our Madden recreation flagged the Rams for pass interference. Brees gonna throw. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. Pass interference. Defense. 
and we turned the setting for pass interference calls all the way down. Instead, Lutz's short field goal put the Saints up by three with a minute and a half left for the Rams. That was too much time for Jared Goff and co. as Zerline booted the 48-yarder in the waning seconds. That set the stage for a not-so-epic overtime. Once again, controversy loomed when the refs appeared to miss another defensive pass interference call. This one on John Johnson against Michael Thomas. Oh, and it led to the aforementioned Breeze interception. Thomas was clearly held and interfered with, but the refs didn't call anything, and the Rams easily moved down the field to let Zerline play hero with his game-winning 57-yard field goal in overtime. And so, two blown calls in such little time. But the missed call on Robbie Coleman was so embarrassing and inexcusable itself that the no call against Johnson on Thomas is often forgotten about. It's embarrassing. And the NFL should be looking at how things are done in the great white north. In 2014, the CFL introduced a highly successful rule that lets teams challenge for pass interference. Coaches are now allowed to challenge both called and potential defensive pass interference fouls under certain conditions. The new rule now provides a team with the ability to use any and all of its coaches' challenges to challenge a called or potential pass interference foul up to the final three minutes of a game. It's honestly such a simple and easy rule that has helped the CFL avoid such controversial finishes. Upon review, there was pass interference, Hamilton number 27. Why can't the NFL do this? Imagine how much backlash will be stopped. Think about the clean and fair finishes. There are literally no cons in adopting the CFL's rule for this. And as for the AFC champions, what can we say? The whole world knows what's going to happen when the officials have to make a close call in a big game involving the Patriots. It all started when Julian Edelman apparently muffed a punt, which the Chiefs recovered deep in the New England territory. You the play, you determined that the receiver did not touch the ball. Therefore, in order for this to come back, there had to be conclusive evidence that Edelman didn't touch it. But everybody knew this would go the Patriots' way. And indeed, they decided Edelman didn't touch it, even though the video evidence appeared to be fairly inconclusive. Two plays later, Brady was picked off. The Chiefs would take advantage and score the go-ahead touchdown, but it would only lead to yet another controversial call in favor of the Patriots. Brady missed Edelman on a pass that should have brought up third and seven. Instead, the refs made that ridiculous roughing the passer penalty against Chris Jones. Probably the worst roughing the pass penalty ever. There was absolutely nothing dirty, but we all know breathing on the quarterbacks leads to a penalty in today's NFL. No surprise. On a third and eight situation, Brady found Chris Hogan for a key 11 yard gain. The Chiefs reviewed the play and though it looked like the ball hit the ground, the officials predictably gave the call to the Pats. So instead of possibly getting the ball back with a 21-17 lead, the Chiefs trailed by four and needed more Patrick Mahomes magic. The Chiefs needed just five plays to retake the lead, capped off by Damian Williams' two yard touchdown run. Now, now it was up to the defense to stop Tom Brady from another signature fourth quarter comeback. Brady threw what appeared to be a game-ending interception to Chavarius Ward, but guess what? D. Ford was off sides. The Pats kept the ball, and Rex Burkhead scored the go-ahead touchdown with 39 seconds left. By the way, good look breeders pointed out that the referee seemed to tell Tom Brady, I got your back, know that, before Ward's interception was called by Ford's offside penalty. The Chiefs would drive down the field and force overtime on a Harrison Butker field goal. But in typical Patriots fashion, they got more luck by winning the coin toss. After choosing to receive the kickoff, Brady drove the pads down the field and Burkhead punched home the game-winning touchdown. Too bad the NFL doesn't let every team possess the ball at least once in overtime. They should adopt the CFL or college rules. You know, if the team that starts with the ball scores a touchdown, the other team gets a chance to at least match it. But yeah, NFL, let's let a team's entire season come down to a coin toss rather than give both teams a chance. How nice would it have been if Matt Ryan got a chance in Super Bowl 51? Or if Mahomes got a chance in the AFC Championship game. Nope, the coin toss is all luck. And as usual, it was on the side of the Patriots. Okay, so with horrible officiating helping both road teams win, why in the world should we think this could have been rigged? Well, we have to remember who the favorites were here. Most of the betting money was on the two home teams. You can always believe in rigging when there's lots of money at stake. The two underdogs happened to be the beneficiary of terrible officiating. Vegas won the betting here. It was so ugly and awful for the NFL that Sportsbook actually refunded the money to the folks who bet on the Saints. Now, let's think think about the Super Bowl matchup. Los Angeles is obviously a way bigger market than New Orleans, and Boston is obviously much larger than Kansas City. It's not crazy to think the NFL would try its best to ensure the best ratings possible for a Super Bowl matchup. Remember when the Jacksonville Jaguars were on the wrong side of atrocious officiating against the Patriots in last year's AFC Championship game? The NFL seemed to do everything in its power to ensure these small market Jaguars didn't get in, and they succeeded. Let's not forget the 2002 NBA postseason, where the officials were clearly in favor of the Los Angeles Lakers 
over the Sacramento Kings in the Western Conference Finals. It was better for the NBA ratings wise if the Lakers got in over the Kings. You think it's a coincidence that LA got every call over Sacramento? And they play in one of football's biggest markets. That's simply why the NFL wants them in the Super Bowl. This dream team will always draw mega ratings. As for the Rams, again, it's a huge market. They're led by big time stars like Jared Goff, Todd Gurley, and Aaron Donald. Perhaps the NFL was quite bent on ensuring this powerhouse from a big market plays in the Super Bowl. Yes, the Saints and Chiefs would have been a great Super Bowl, but these aren't two major markets. And it's safe to say that lots of people outside of KC and New Orleans wouldn't be interested enough to watch. Just look at Super Bowl ratings over the last 10 years. The Pittsburgh Steelers and Arizona Cardinals met in Super Bowl 43. The household rating in that game was 42. Every Super Bowl that followed has topped 42 by a decent margin. No surprise. Arizona and Pittsburgh are two not so big markets. So add it all up and tell us this. Do you really think the NFL let this go the whole time? It's just pure coincidence that the two underdogs won on the road, all thanks to being on the right side of numerous controversial calls? Vegas won. The two biggest markets won. For ratings sake, the NFL won. Let's also not forget last year's World Series. Do you guys remember where it took place? Oh yeah, Boston and Los Angeles. Between the Boston Red Sox and the Los Angeles Dodgers. Now, that may just be a coincidence, but it's kind of weird given all of these other coincidental things happening and this also happening right now. What are the chances that for the World Series and the Super Bowl, all four teams are from the same markets? It's kind of weird. Now, obviously, there were a lot of other controversial calls that people weren't talking about. There were penalties on both sides of the ball that did not get called. So yeah, you can say it's sort of fair because not everything got called. It wasn't just those few really big plays. But the thing is, those few really big plays should have been called. And not only that, it was directly in sight of the referees. So that's a problem. And the NFL knows this. And literally the entire world knows this. The Rams, the Chiefs, the Patriots, the Saints. Everybody is aware of it. Now, there are going to be a lot of Patriots and Rams haters here. Uh, for one, I wanted the Rams to win. I just did. I, I think that Drew Brees deserved it, but I wanted the Rams to win for whatever reason I wanted them to. As for the Patriots, I didn't want the Patriots to win. I wanted the Chiefs to win. That doesn't make me just a Patriots hater. I admit, Tom Brady and the Patriots are a good team, all right? They're a good team, and they're very talented, and they deserve their wins. But in these certain situations, I don't think they do, based on the calls that were or were not made. But that's just me. The Saints and Chiefs have every right to be upset because you don't just play an entire season just to lose simply on the basis of some horrible officiating. Like it or not, Rams and Patriots fans, there are asterisks to your teams reaching the Super Bowl. Now, we're not saying this is all true. It could just be coincidence. It could have just been bad officiating. And maybe it was just luck for some of the teams. But all of these things add up. And it's a little weird. So we're just saying... It totally could have been rigged. Do you think the conference championship games were rigged? Join us in the comment section below. Make sure to follow myself and Total Pro Sports on social media. We post great content all the time, all the time. It's great. At least go check out our profiles. Like, go take a look, see if you like it. And if you like us, then follow us. And if you don't, don't follow us. Either way, you're awesome. And we appreciate you. And you're a great person. And keep watching our videos, because we love that you watch them. If you like this video, make sure to like it. It takes one click right down there. One click, that's all you gotta do. If this is your first time around TPS, make sure to subscribe, because we post videos every single day. Every day is new video so you should definitely subscribe why would you not want good sports content every day subscribe of course thanks so much for watching i'm jason biondo and i'll see you next time On my knee Keep watching it. We are gonna keep loving football. What can we do or say? All right, nothing. <laughs> but yeah, guys, yo, uh, let me know who you think is gonna win this Super Bowl. Me myself, I gotta go with the Rams. Only for two reasons, because I really hate the Rams. I'm a big 49er fan, just in case you didn't know. Uh, but as far as the Rams go, uh, the first reason I want them to uh, win is because my little cousin plays for the Rams, Troy Hill. 
You know what I'm saying? Uh, this would be his first Super Bowl. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I know he is real hyped up and happy. Man, I'm happy for him. I'm, I'm happy for him, his mom, his dad. You know what I'm saying? Um, his brothers, sisters, man, yo. They all happy. For real, man. Whole family happy for him, man. Straight up. And the second reason I want the Rams to win is because they're in our division. And plus, I hate Tom Brady because he's a natural born cheater. And you know he is, just like I know. <laughs> but let me know who you think going to win this Super Bowl, all right? <laughs> Till next time, squad.